Today we're going to work with polyatomic ions, and back in our notes from earlier on, yesterday, or the last time we met, um, we had on here the polyatomic ions, and what's happening with polyatomic ions, and what's really weird about this is most of the polyatomic ions are made up of nothing but nonmetals. But when we put these nonmetals together, they don't have eight electrons each, and we haven't really talked about that yet. So they have to do something to help share electrons and also to acquire electrons. That's why they have these charges, which means that some metal has given an electron to them to get everybody to have the octet or to have the same electron configuration as the nearest noble gas. The table that we have in the notes here somewhere, okay, this is a list of some of the polyatomic ions. Now, I will allow you to use the list while you're doing the homework, but there's 10 of these that you must know. So you'll, it's just like your 52 elements, names, and symbols, there's 10 that you have to memorize. If you have a highlighter, today's a great day to get your highlighter out. So the first one is acetate. So the acetate C2H3O2 with the negative one charge, it's the very first one, so I'll highlight that one. Okay. And actually, if you eat vinegar, sorry, consume vinegar, this is the main component within vinegar, acetate. Uh, the next one I want you to highlight is chlorate, ClO3. And again, these are, I hope, in alphabetical order. So chlorate, ClO3. The ATE, ATE, so the eight. Um, go down a little bit farther where it says hydroxide, the OH. Wait, we have to memorize uh, like the formula. The formula, the name, and the charge. Yeah, that's why I'm having you highlight them. So hydroxide. So again, acetate, chlorate, hydroxide. The one directly below it, iodate, IO3 with the negative one charge. Skip down to nitrate, NO3, with a negative one charge. So what have we got so far? One, two, four, three, four, five. Okay. And that's all of the ones in the first column. Okay. So again, nitrate, iodate, hydroxide, um, chlorate, and acetate. In the second column, and you guys have three columns on your notes? Okay, good. Um, carbonate, CO3 with a negative 2 charge, the second one in the second column. Also the third one in the second column, CRO4 with the negative 2, chromate. Uh, sulfate, where are you at? Oh, you're down here, sulfate, SO4 with a negative 2. And that should be all of those in the second column. And how many is that so far? Seven, eight. 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 Okay. Uh, there's only one in the negative three column. Phosphate, PO4 with a negative three charge. And then the last one is a positively charged polyatomic ammonium. Now, one thing that uh, you'll notice about all of these polyatomic ions they have at least two different kinds of nonmetals. Now, they all have, no, I'm sorry, acetate has three. Other than acetate, they only have two different nonmetals. So make sure that you're making flashcards right on one side, like acetate, and then flip the card over and put C2H3O2, negative one. Okay. Those are the 10 you have to know. Now, for the homework, I'll let you get used to using this chart because I'll ask for a couple others. Now, I'm, these are not all the polyatomics that exist. These are just this, quite a few that we could use. Um, no, I'm not going to have you memorize that, even though oxalate's pretty popular. All right. We'll talk about this box a little bit later on. Don't worry about it just yet. I want you to get the basics down today. Or maybe I will talk about it. I can't remember. Um, let's go ahead and get the blanks here. Polyatomic. Oh, looks like we are going to do the eights and ites. 
Okay. And actually, I am going to discuss this when we do do the examples. So I just want you to get the blanks here. Nacho. Nacho. Sodium acetate. I think. Oh, no, here we go. So not used. One more blank. Okay. Um, no, I think that's all. This is all the farther we're going. Yeah, we'll go from name to the formulas. All right, so we have to look at the examples. And you have the polyatomic ion sheet in front of you. And actually, let me write the 10 real quick. Uh, so C2H3. That's acetate. And then I said, what was next? Chlorate? Hydroxide? Let me try to keep them in order. Is that right? Chlorate, hydroxide, iodate, iodate nitrate, nitrate, carbonate, chromate. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Carbonate, chromate, sulfate, sulfate phosphate, phosphate. Okay, so those are the ones that you must know. Okay, and then the other ones for the homework, I can give you any of them that are on that sheet. These are the ones that you'll see on the quiz and test. Okay, or actually test, I won't give you. Um, let me go to the examples and then I can help explain what's going on here. Uh, so at the bottom of page seven, it says, what is the formula for the compound containing calcium ions and hydroxide ions? Now, the really nice thing about what we're doing today is very similar to what we did yesterday. We're always going to put the metal first. Yeah, we're on the bottom of page seven. So we'll always put the metal first. How in the world are you going to know who the metal is if, say, you were only given a compound that contains polyatomics? How in the world are you going to know? Charge. What does that mean? Who said it? Okay. Very good. Very good. So if we have a positive polyatomic and we only have one of them, if it's ammonium, that's our metal. Now, most of the time, we won't have ammonium, but we'll have an actual metal. But if you're given a polyatomic situation, make sure that we're still writing the positively charged thing first, and then we'll write the negatively charged thing second. Very good. All right, so we're given in the first example something that contains calcium ions and hydroxide. So again, hydroxide is OH with a negative 1, so that's definitely going to be written second. Calcium is 1 over 52. What's the charge on calcium? Uh, plus 2. Yeah, we'll need your, always have your periodic tables out. Plus 2. And hydroxide is what charge? Negative 1. Very good. So, same thing that we did yesterday, we want to make sure that the algebraic sum equals zero. We always want to write the metal first, followed by the non-metal. So, do we have the same chart? I'm sorry, does that equal zero? Uh, no. 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 Alright, now, here's something that's kind of weird. I do need two of those. Is it okay for me to just look at that and go, eh, we're good? No. Why? Very good. So if you need to represent more than one of these, whether it has a subscript at the end or not, you must show parentheses. And this only applies to the polys. So parentheses, poly, parentheses, poly, parentheses, poly. We would never ever, like if I was doing something like um, sodium sulfate, okay? When I balance this out, yeah, even though sodium has more than one letter, we never do this for an element. We only use parentheses for a poly. Okay. So parentheses when you need to represent more than one polyatomic. All right, so, and for those of you who are like, what are they talking about? Ah, it's wet. So if I just do this, 
Now that's saying that I have one calcium, one oxygen, and two hydrogen. However, if I put this whole thing in parentheses, that now means I have two oxygens plus two hydrogens, okay? So make sure that if you need to represent more than one of these polyatomics, we must use parentheses. Don't do that. Okay. Um, let's see. On page 8, it says write the formula for the following compounds where we have calcium acetate. I must like calcium a lot. So CA. And what's the formula for acetate? C2H3O2. Very good. So C2H3O2. Again, calcium has a plus 2 charge. Acetate has a negative 1 charge. Uh, we're at the top of page 8. The Yeah, calcium acetate. Now, and this really looks funny too. Now, when we balance this out, we know that we need two of those. If you just stick a two there, oh boy. So that makes, a, I think it makes a little more sense to make sure you have parentheses there than with the hydroxide. But again, if you need to represent more than one, put the poly in parentheses, okay? I always say that, poly parentheses, poly parentheses, okay? But if you only need to show one of these, don't put it in parentheses, okay? All right, sodium phosphate. How would I write that? NA. Sodium, good, Na. Um, and phosphate? I don't know what it's P -O. What's the matter? PO4. PO4 with what charge? Negative, Negative three. Negative three. And the sodium's a plus one. So what do we do here? Good. So we need three sodiums. And we don't. Do not put parentheses around that since it's an element. Even though the element has more than one letter. Okay. It's all understood that, yes, in a sodium. Okay. So, very similar to what we were doing yesterday, except now we have <laughs> a polyatomic in there. Uh, hydroxide ions with aluminum ions. Hydroxide ions with aluminum ions. Okay. Write the aluminum first. Very good, because we have our metal. And what's the charge on aluminum? Plus three. Plus three. And what was the other one? Hydroxide? Huh? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. So what do we need to do? Uh, Good. So parentheses around the OH. So aluminum hydroxide looks like that. Uh, ammonium phosphate. Is ammonium one of your 52? Yeah, yeah. No, no. no. It's that thing. Yeah, it's a polyatomic. Um, most of these polyatomics end in A-E-T-E. -E. Most of them end in A-T-E, like acetate, chlorate, iodate, nitrate, carbonate, chromate, sulfate, phosphate. There's two, hydroxide and ammonium, that don't. But if it ends in A-T-E, I guarantee you it's a poly. All right? And we wouldn't drop the last syllable and add IDE. We only do that to elements, and we don't have any yet, okay? So what we did yesterday, when you're looking at, and I always tell my students, when you're looking at the periodic table at a non-metal, that's when you drop the last syllable and add IDE. Now what really stinks is how does this one end? Uh, Hydroxide, IDE. Okay. Now remember that hydroxide is a poly, okay. so that's the, that's the only weird one. And again, they came up with the the name before the the rule, so you got to remember. Oh, normally if it ends in IDE, it's an element except for hydroxide. All right, sorry. Uh, so ammonium phosphate, so ammonium NH4, and what's the charge on ammonium? Good. And phosphate. PO4 with a minus 3. So what do we do? Good. So we need to balance that out by putting a 3 there. Okay. Again, if you need to represent more than one poly, you use parentheses. <coughs> um, potassium nitrate. What's potassium? K plus 1. K plus 1. And nitrate? Minus there it is. N of 3. Oops, sorry. So are we good? Yeah. 
Again, if you only need to show one, no parentheses. So like the phosphate, only one, no parentheses, no parentheses, no parentheses. Only when you need to represent more than one. Uh, calcium ions and carbonate ions? CA, good. And carbonate is this guy, CO3. What's the charge on calcium? Plus two. Carbonate? Looks good. Okay. All right, and you guys got the blank for that last one there? Yeah. Okay. All right, let me erase this and then we'll do the others. Any questions on these, first of all? And I, I realize that the polyatomics are something new to you, so I don't expect you to have them memorized yet. I'll give you the weekend. <laughs> it was a weekend. I'll give you the weekend. All right, so now you're given the formula. So, again, identify who is who. Now, I think it makes it a little easier um, when we look at, say, this compound here, and we go, oh, yeah, well, we have the parentheses. However, if you were given something like, well, hopefully it's not one of our examples. I don't think so. Let's say that you were given this. Okay. You're looking at that going, what is that? And especially on a day like today. Well, technically this is them, so what's, what's the big deal? Okay. But <laughs> if you're new at this, and which all of you should be, we always want to start off with a metal. So if you start off with something that's not a metal, in other words, by distinction on the periodic table, then you realize, or you should realize, I'm looking at a polyatomic to start me off. So once you identify who the metal is, okay, once you identify who the metal is, what's left has to be the non-metal. And in some cases, if you have more than one element, it's going to be a poly. Okay? Because it has a positive charge. We say that it's more metallic. It's not necessarily a metal, but it's more metallic because of its charge. So what Justin said earlier. Like we won't do that. Right. Yeah, we're not going to put negatives with negatives. All right. Yeah. All right, so looking at this, what's the name of that? Ammonium, because it's one of our 10 polys. Ammonium sulfate, A-T-E, okay. All right, and then the next one, was it, N-A? Why does the SO4 not have a negative 2? Does. There's, again, it's plus 1, and then the negative 2, but there's 2 right here. Oh, so, okay, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So it does, yeah. All right, this one, Na2O. Sodium oxide. It's what we did yesterday. Okay, so it's not a poly. I threw that in there just to keep it real. Just to keep it real. Yeah, don't ever let that come out. All right. Nobody cares. Rude. All right, so where do we have here? Magnesium oxide. Hydroxide. It starts with oxygen, though. I don't care. It's a polyatomic. It's called hydroxide. So magnesium hydroxide. Um, what is the next one? ALNO3. What's this one? Aluminum something. Something. Good. Aluminum nitrate. Boom. Aluminum nitrate. You don't have to be special in doing that. Oh, sorry. I didn't know if it was right. Um, and then here we go. Is that a new something? A numium? Ammonium. Ammonium. There you go. Ammonium what? All right, so here's another great example. So we find out, okay, we have nothing but non-metals. Identify who the metal is. Whatever's left is your non-metal. Okay. Which one? Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Thank you. 
That was my very nice. All right. <laughs> Looking at the bottom. Actually, let me pull it up. At the bottom of the wherever you are. <coughs> the sheet. There it is. Okay. At the bottom of the sheet, you'll notice that it has the three little boxes here. Okay. And what it states is that if I notice that it ends in ITE, then what it's saying is that the polyatomic has one less oxygen than the poly that has ATE. So for example, if I'm looking at say, oh I don't know, vanadate, since it's right there, okay? Vanadate has VO3 with a negative one charge. If I were to give you VO2 with a negative one charge, it wouldn't be vanadate, it would be vanda -ite. It would end in ITE. Okay. So if it ends in ITE, that means that the poly, the poly has one less oxygen than the ATE ending version. Looking at the second box where it says hypo dot 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 ite, that means that two oxygens have been removed. So if I have VO with a negative one charge, now I have hypo vanda ite. So the, the hypo dot 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 ite simply means that we've removed two oxygens. The per that Avery was talking about, and notice that the ATE still is there, the per means that we've added another oxygen to the poly. Now here's a really cool thing. Even though we're removing oxygens or adding oxygens, the charge doesn't change. Okay. So the charge remains the same. What did you say it was per what? Per chlorate. Per chlorate. Okay, what's the charge on chlorate? It's ClO with a, I'm sorry, ClO3 minus with a one. minus one. So per chlorate is ClO. No, it's, a, it's ClO4 because we add one more oxygen to it with a negative one charge. Okay. And let me do some examples. And let's go with, um, oh. Hopefully this isn't one of yours on your homework. Okay. I'm going to go through all the different types here. Okay. So this is sodium chlorate. Okay. So chlorate. Sodium chlorate. If I remove an oxygen, okay, the charge is still plus one, minus one. This is now sodium. Sodium what? Chlorite. Okay. Now that's this is what it is. Okay. Up here to ClO3, that's that's what it is. Except this doesn't apply. The rules that we're doing now don't apply to the hydroxide, the ammonium, the acetate, and that's it. So really, of the ten, only seven of these get to dance. All right. Um, if I do this. How many oxygens have I removed from the original chlorate? Two. So this is a hypo chlorite. Okay. So hypochlorite. And then going the opposite direction, if I add one more. Okay. And again, this is our original, our, our starting point. Perchlorate. Perchlorate. Very good. Is there anything called a hypochlorate? No. Um, no, there's no hypo eights that exist. Is that what you asked? Yeah. Yeah. No perites. Yeah. So if it loses an oxygen, we go to ite. If we lose two oxygens, it goes to hypoite. If we add an oxygen, we go per. And we leave we leave the root as is. Okay. There's our root. Alright. Makes sense? Now, I thought I heard Avery say something about peroxide. Did I hear that? Yeah, because I was okay. talking to myself. Peroxide's kind of weird. In other words, some of us use it whenever we get a cut or a bruise, or not a bruise, but a cut. Some people gargle with it. Hydrogen peroxide, really? Okay. Um, and again, the peroxide for oxide, and we haven't talked, well, yeah, we have talked about this. 
when we look at, say, um, oxygen, what's the charge that oxygen has within a compound? Negative two. Negative two. Good. So we have the negative two charge for something. We'll just put it with something there. What does it mean if we have per oxide? That means that we're adding one more oxygen. What happens to the charge? It stays, stays the same. That's huge. So we'll add one more oxygen to it. So hydrogen peroxide looks like this, H2O2. Because again, each hydrogen has what charge? Plus one, so we need two of those. So hydrogen peroxide is H2O2.